like I said, my name is Whitley, I'm 21, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and um, I grew up in a really good home, my parents, they love God, they serve God, so from a young age, they instilled good values in me, and um, I knew what to do and what not to do, and I knew of God, and I grew up in the church, going to church on Sundays and on Wednesdays, and I went to Winterfest, so I knew who Eddie was, and I had all the right things, I had all the right tools, so from a young age, I knew the right things to do, but... I didn't really have an intimate relationship with God. I didn't know that you could have a true and a real intimate relationship with Him. So um, going through school, I went to a Christian school, but I was still really naive, and I went to a Christian university. But when I went to that university, I was still so lost because I had this idea of who God was. I had this idea of what a relationship with Him was, but really all I had was religion. I didn't have a real relationship with God. So when I went off to college, I didn't have a foundation that I could build on. I didn't have something that I could stand on that would keep me firm when I went to school. So I ended up getting hooked up with the wrong people, and I got myself into the party life, and I started drinking, and drinking turned to smoking weed, and after that, um, I just, I got so heavy into the party life, and, and the, the wrong lifestyle that I got hooked up with the wrong guy, and I was in a bad relationship for about a year and a half, and in this relationship, this man, he would yell at me, and he would throw things at me, and he would cuss at me, and he would just treat me like dirt, and he would just show me that I had no worth, and I believed it, because I didn't know what love was. I knew who God was, but I didn't know that he could be that affirmation, and be that love that I needed. I knew that he was a provider, I knew that he could heal people, I knew that he could do all these things that people said in the church, but no one showed me what an intimate relationship with God was. No one showed me the connection that you could truly have with God, so I didn't know what it was. So my idea of love was completely twisted. So I was in this relationship and I was so lost and so broken that I gave myself to this man sexually at the age of 18 when really my purity was something that I held so close to me. I was the last one in my family that had my purity and I wanted to keep it for my husband. But I gave it to this man because I thought that if I did that he would love me more. And I thought that if I did that he would marry me and he would be with me forever and he would give me the things that I wanted and, and treat me the way I wanted to be treated. But really it made everything so much worse because it created a soul tie. It created a yoke of bondage that I couldn't get out of. And um, God got me to a point where I had to drop out of school because my grades were so bad and there was nothing else I could do. They had taken the money from me that I got for scholarship, so I had to leave. And when I left, God gave me an opportunity to get out of this relationship, so I did. And God, um, he set me free from the drugs and he set me free from the alcohol. He set me free from the drugs. And I thank God for that, but that wasn't the issue. The issue was so deep-rooted. The issue started when I was a young girl because I was a tomboy growing up and I thought that was okay until I got to high school and the boys weren't looking at me the way that they were looking at the other girls and they weren't giving me the attention that they were giving everyone else and I didn't understand why. I didn't know that that was okay. I didn't know that it was okay to be the way I was. I thought there was something wrong with Whitley. So I was longing for affirmation and longing for love in the wrong ways and I was going after the wrong men and I was letting them talk to me in ways that I really didn't want them to and letting them put their hands on me in ways that I really didn't desire. And I was giving myself away bit by bit and giving pieces of my heart and pieces of my soul away to men that didn't deserve it at all. And I was so lost and so broken that God broke me down at the altar and I was like, God, why can't I be loved? Why can't I be affirmed? Why is there someone that can give me the desires of my heart, that can give me the things that I long for? There was a boy and I was trying to put a man in that boy. I was trying to put a man in that spot, but it was a God-shaped boy. It was a God-shaped hole that was in my heart and I didn't know that it was for God. I didn't know that he was the one that was supposed to fill it. And God broke me down at an altar like this one. And he said, Whitley, when you truly give me your heart, I'll give it to a man that truly yes. deserves it. And God showed me what love was. And he showed me that I'm worth it. He showed me that I'm worth the way. He showed me that there's a man out there that's going to love me, that's going to take care of me, that's going to cherish me, and that's going to push me in my calling and push me in my anointing. And ladies, I just want to speak to you and tell you that there's someone out there that deserves you, that you don't have to give yourself away bit by bit by bit. Because when you do that, when you do that, you're left with nothing. When you take yourself and you give yourself away to this man and to that man, and you're just talking to this one, and you're just being having an emotional connection with this one, and you're not sleeping with that one, you're not doing anything wrong with that one, but you're giving yourself away bit, bit by bit. And when you get to your husband, you're not going to have anything left to give him. You're supposed to give your husband your purity. Men, you're supposed to give your wife your purity. But the, the longer you stay in those relationships, the longer you give yourself away emotionally, and spiritually, you won't have anything left. You won't have anything left to give your mate. God has designed you for one person. And God has designed that relationship to be pure and to be holy and to be under the, the union of marriage and not promiscuity and not premarital sex and not all these things that the world has twisted to make, it, make us think it's okay. God has he's given us a, a desire for him and once we fill that desire, once we put him in a place where he belongs, he'll give us the person that we desire. He'll give us the person that will love us and cherish us and treat us 
that's the way we're supposed to be treated. Yes. So, long story short, God set me free from perversion, and He set me free from the desire to even do anything like that, and then He's showing me that I'm worth the wait, and I'm in a process now of just learning who God is, and learning who I am in God, and just yes. cherishing myself, and knowing that it's okay to be single, it's okay to be where I am with God, because I want a different relationship with God first, I want a relationship with God where He is my one desire, and He is my husband, and He is everything that I need, and when I do that, ladies, when you do that, men, when you do that, don't give you the person you desire, when you're not even looking for that person, God will give you the one that you want, so God, I ask, Father God, that you'll break the spirit of perversion, Father God, that you'll break the spirit of addiction in this region, God, I ask, Father God, that you'll bring worth to your children, God, that you'll bring worth to your sons and your daughters, God, that you'll show them who they truly are, God, and you'll romance them with your love, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen.